So next up, we are going to look at the branch and bound based approach. So actually this, this approach uses heuristics. Uh, the, the basic idea is that since we, 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 we are looking at this uh, search space, which represents a kind of a tree, the idea is that maybe we can identify a sub portion of this search space. Uh, so basically the, the, this, con con this search space consists of a lot of branches and we want to basically bound this solution space uh to to this this barrier but how are we going to do it how do we know we can apply some kind of heuristic which is going to guide us towards this bounded region and this this basically implies that we will have some some kind of uh, uh, branches which we are going to eliminate because of this heuristic so the basic approach of the branch and bound uh, uh, method is actually that we can compute the traveling salesman problem solution as the basis of this minimization of this i n and uh, this is going to be j so i is not going to be equal to j n followed by c i j and x i j so what are these expressions? The xig is the adjacency matrix. And cig is going to be our cost matrix. So this only consists of ones and zeros and this basically gives us the cij uh, cost value of each edge with respect to these, these positions. So a few considerations need to be uh, taken into account over here. Um, let me move this aside. So the first consideration is the so-called adjacency matrix. Uh, so basically what we have over here is that the adjacency matrix comprises of uh, entirely uh, zeros and ones. So x, i, j, if it is basically equal to uh, zero that simply means we are not going to go down that path okay and if the x i j value is equal to one so that means that this is a possible candidate this would imply that if we start at position a over here we have the option of going to b or c or d from a but nobody else so this is the first consideration which has to be taken into account the second consideration uh, consideration is that of the cost matrix so the basic idea over here uh, with respect to the uh, uh, cost matrix is that this is going to be used to apply some some uh, set of constraints. So for example, if we take the case of our matrix over here, uh, if you take the case of the graph over here, this is the graph which is being considered. We only want sub tours of length four. So that would imply that sub tours of length one represented as these movements okay so these are basically self loops we don't want them likewise if we take the case of sub tours of length two we could have these movements okay so we don't want these either likewise if we take the case of the uh, horizontal movements we don't want these either in the case of sub tours of length three we may have either of these situations so we don't want these expressions like this also. How do we get rid of these sub -tours? We are only interested in a sub -tour of length 4. Well, we can get rid of all of these by setting the corresponding cij values to infinity. This would imply that the values over here representing infinity on the diagonals, they are not, they can also appear elsewhere in this matrix in the in the cost matrix they can appear anywhere so if we are going to erase the sub tour of length uh, one okay we can apply a constraint in this manner so basically if you're going to erase the loops over here 
uh, we can set the corresponding x i i value as zero, which is already the case, and its its corresponding uh, c i i. Okay, so this should be i over here. This will be set to infinity, which is already the case. If we are going to get rid of subtours of length two, we can design a constraint in such a way that we can say that x i j plus x j i should be less than equal to one. So of course, since we consider that this is a metric, uh, this can refer to two over here. But in order, in order. To in, if, if we have come down, so if we if we come down from i to j, so this is i and j. If we set x j i as infinity, so if if x i j is equal to one, and x j i is set to zero, and the corresponding c i j value is some 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 value b, and c j i is set to infinity, that means we have just eliminated this. Uh, subtour of length two. The same process can be extended to take into account subtours of length three over here. Okay, we can take the case of x i j plus x j k plus x k i as less than equal to two, and again taking into account that if we take i j and k over here, so this is i j and k, we have to set x k i is equal to 0 and c k i is equal to infinity. So when this is done, we have just eliminated the subtour corresponding to that location. So this is how the subtours, going, uh, subtours are going to be applied. So we start the branch and bound approach by taking into account the heuristic of, uh, of a row minimum. And the row minimum is calculated by looking at each row and choosing the minimum value over here. So I have circled them out over here. So this is 10 plus 10 plus 6 plus 6 and this comes out to be 32. This is going to be a starting point and it be, is going to be used as a direction. So this is the heuristic which we are talking about. It's going to allow us to choose us uh, choose um, uh, some branches which are going to be giving us the best performance as compared to the other uh, branches inside the entire uh, in, inside the full search space and we can now use the um, uh, the 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 heuristic 32 as the starting point over here and consider that we can move in either of these directions so taking into account that we are going to move along the starting point of A, we have the option of going from A to B, A to C, and A to D because they have the values 1 over here. And we have to perform a kind of a reduction operation. So if you're going to move from A to B, that would imply that we can remove this movement reflected by this row and this column over here. Uh, we can get rid of this. Likewise, if you're going to move from A to C, we can get rid of the row A and the column C and the same applies to AD as well. Once we perform this movement, we can then look at the reduced uh, matrix. So by the by, by getting rid of the row A, we are left with the rows BCD and the columns ACD. And uh, when we are left with the, uh, when we have removed column C, we are left with columns A, B, D over here. So we have all of these expressions over here. Now, since we have moved from A to B, let me zoom in. Since we have moved from A to B, we don't want to move back from B to A again. Okay, so we, we don't want this. And as a result, we can notice that we can notice that we have set the movement of B to A as infinity. Likewise, if we take it, the case of the movement from A to C, we don't want C to A, we don't want D to A, and all these movements over here are set to infinity so that, that the sub tour has been eliminated. So with, so with this uh, uh, reduced uh, subspace, we can then 
construct the row minimum again and this time the row minimum would imply that we have to look at each row so 15 over here 6 over here and 6 over here plus the cost of movement from A to B. In this manner we can compute the new row minimum and this will turn out to be 37. We do the same exercise over here and in these cases the row minimum turns out to be 54 and 49. Since we are using this as a guiding factor we have to choose the minimum value over here and proceed with ex uh, expanding the tree with respect to the value 37 and we can ignore the 54 and 49 over here. So with this we can now refer back to our matrix and since we have now moved to uh, the position B, from B we can move down towards the direction of either C or D. Okay, So if we move down in the direction of B to C, we can get rid of the row B and the column C. If we move down in the direction of B, D, we can get rid of the row B and the column D. And that would imply that now we have to apply sub tours of length uh, uh, 3 constraint and in that manner if we move from A to B, B to C we don't want to move back from C to A and as a result of that we are left with no choice but to apply this constraint over here and we don't want to move over here from D to A over here again so we apply a sub tour elimination constraint of uh, infinity over here again so this time when we compute the uh, you can say the, the 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 new row minimum we have 6 plus 18 plus the cost of moving from a to b plus the cost of moving to b to c and we can look at this expression as a to b and b to d, b to d and the row minimum is also 21 plus 6 over here and applying these values so this is going to be 10 and 15 and this is basically 10 and 17 we can do this totaling so this is 25 25 and 6 is 31 uh, this is equal to 49 and when we do this computation this is 27 and 6 33 33 uh, uh, 34 54 so again we can get rid of this and now we are left with this part over here and notice that if if you're going to move with 49 we can see that we have to apply a constraint of uh, you can say this and this okay and we are left with d over here also so th there's one more step but it it just leaves us behind with this expression that we have moved from from a to b and then we have moved from uh, B to C and then finally we have moved from C to D and then you go back to the starting position and this tour is going to be giving us the value of 49 which is the same value which we have uh, um, obtained in the previous case so you can you can you can refer to this this 49 over here uh, it's still a b c d a and we can see a b c d a over here also okay so the branch and bound solution has able to has been able to compute the uh, the right answer in a search space comprising of only uh, a few uh, branch based movements